Howdy howdy ladies and gentlemen, my name is Admin, and today I have possibly a new series for you. As the title of the video suggests, today we're going to be doing a basic tutorial on creating data packs. Now creating a data pack is not an easy task, and there's just so much to it that this cannot possibly be explained in a single video. So today's video is just going to be a basic overview of how to make a data pack, and future videos, assuming we have any, will go more in depth on specific subjects that are of use. That said, if you want me to make an episode two, please leave a like on the video. If we get 100 likes on this video, I will make another one. All right, so to get started, what is a data pack? A data pack is a collection of files that can modify the vanilla Minecraft game to be slightly different. Data packs are an officially supported way of modifying the game. And they work in both single player and multiplayer and can work in any version of the game, snapshots, um, and of course official releases. And they sometimes even work in modded versions of the game. What makes data packs different from mods is that they don't use any actual code. Instead, they're using the in-game Minecraft command language to get the job done. Data packs use what are known as functions to run Minecraft commands. A function is pretty much just a list of commands that get run in order. But what's a command? A command is anything that you can type into chat to do something. For example, slash say hi will have the character say hi. There are also stuff like teleporting commands, play sound commands, particle commands, summon commands, and plenty of other ones. So a data pack uses these commands to accomplish pretty much anything that you can possibly think of, as long as that is actually possible with the commands we have. There are only about 70 commands to work with, and generally I only use around 11 to 12 of those in each of my packs. So if that sounds pretty limiting, that's because it is. Yes, it is very limiting. So now that you know that data packs use commands, it would probably be worthwhile learning every single command that there is in the game so that you know what you can and cannot do. I would suggest reading through the Minecraft wikis page on commands. It is quite useful. However, you could also just learn the commands by typing into chat what you're wanting to do. You'll see um, a list of things show up when you are um, hovering, and this is quite useful in actually learning them. So this will actually tell you what all of these things mean. Um, and then um, I can use these upwards. Um, you will want to spend a lot of time messing around with actual commands in order to figure out how they work. Okay, but how do I actually get around to adding new items to the game? This is where we need a resource pack. So that is why I have a resource pack. Um, as you probably know, this is different from a data pack. A resource pack essentially will contain all of the textures and models that you make. So for example, these things are 3D models, while the swords are individual sprites or textures. Though technically they're also a model too, so we'll probably go a bit more into that in a later episode. Now, when it comes to actual commands, there's a couple really important things to keep in mind. There's more to every command in the game than just the command itself. So for example, slash say hi. It's just going to say hi into chat, right? Well, there's actually a bit more to it. For example, this command actually keeps track of who ran the command, where it was ran, what direction the entity that ran it is facing, what dimension the command is in, and a whole lot more. So when developing a data pack, one of the most important things to um, help you is to always try to remember who is executing the command, where is it being executed, and sometimes the rotation of the command also is important. Okay, so let's give an example of this. So if I run particle flame, um, this is going to cause a flame particle to appear at my location, because I'm the run, the one executing the command, right? But I could use an execute command, which by the way, definitely learn the execute command. It is by far the most useful command in the game. You're not going to be able to do anything without it. Anyway, I can execute as an item frame, these are all item frames over here. Um, and you'll see if I run, if I execute as an item frame, all of the particles still appear at my location because I'm um, basically having them run the command, but the location is still set to me. But I can do at 
um, at s. At s would be the executor, in this case, um, the item frame, and then the at would be the location. So at at s to run the particles, you'll see now we have flames that appear over each of the item frames. So again, this knowledge is really important. So do experiment a lot with this and mess around with the execute command. There's a whole lot of uh, different things you can do with it. It's by far the most powerful command. You can pretty much do anything with just this and then just a couple of other commands um, as long as you spend the time to learn it and understand it. Okay, and the final thing I wanna talk about for just a little bit is NBT data. NBT data is extra data that is stored about an entity in the world. This is stuff like their location, possibly like their age, if they're currently taking damage, if they're on fire, if they're moving, what their motion is, what their rotation is. Anyway, it is really, really, really important, but it's also kind of complex. Here's an example of NBT data. So we have a summon command. This is saying to summon an item at my location. So um, these tildes are known as relative coordinates. So that's is relative to my current location, so at me. Okay, so then everything in green here, this is the NBT. Um, and you can see it is in the curly brackets. That's because this is stored in a data storage format called JSON. Anyway, what this is saying, and if we run the command, you'll see I will get an item of Blackstone. And if I set this down two blocks, you'll see it spawns in an item that is Blackstone. But I could change this to regular stone, and now it would summon in a regular stone. So essentially what this is saying here is I'm summoning an item, and I want the item type to be an ID of Minecraft stone with a count of one. I could also change the count to say 64. Now I just spawned in a stack of stone. So while NBT might seem complicated at first, um, there are plenty of generators that exist on the internet. And the one I personally like to use is called MC Stacker. So link to that in the description. But anyway, that's pretty much all that there's going to be for this introduction. That should be enough to get you started with um, actual commands, and you should have a bit of a base knowledge of how things actually work. That being said, while tutorials like this definitely can help you, one thing that you're going to realize is that I cannot possibly cover everything in tutorials, and neither can anyone else in the Minecraft community. So while things are quite complicated, you are very much so going to have to learn some things yourself by trial and error, by experimenting, whatever works for you. I think it is worth realizing that I have not watched any Minecraft tutorials on how to do things in probably about five years now. So pretty much all of my Minecraft knowledge thus far has been self-taught. And that's absolutely something that you can do yourself too. So spend some time, look at the tools that I did give you in this video and in the coming ones, but realize that yes, you do still have to learn stuff for yourself. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like on it and I'll see you guys all in the next one, assuming we have one. Thanks for watching.